talking bit for a bit, excuse my hair, I just woke up. It is 2... It's 2.40. Um, yeah, I got about five hours and now I'm awake. I have a package that actually arrived the day I left and um, it just it, it basically arrived when I got on the plane. Three skeins of this guy. It's called Sweet and Spookier. It's like a cream base with micro neon speckles. Oh my gosh, look at that section. Oh, I'm so excited. So three skeins is enough for me to make a sweater. Not every single sweater, but a sweater nonetheless. And, oh, this is, I love it. I love this, I love it. Let's talk about my trip because I don't think I've really, um, well, I know I haven't really talked about it. I've just shown you a lot of clips. Oh, look at my hair, it's so dry. So, I went to Vegas to go to the When We Were Young festival which is kind of like warp tour i bought the tickets in january i managed to get tickets for the very first show on saturday before they announced that there were going to be additional days of this festival so we decided, my friend and I decided to make it a relaxing Vegas trip. I'd never been to Vegas before. Um, I don't gamble, not really. Um, you know, I've, I've gone to casinos. I play like penny slots. I just, I'd rather do something else with my money um, than just gamble it. So we stayed at the MGM Grand and then we moved to the Golden Nugget for the weekend because the MGM Grand, um, just hotel prices skyrocketed. And really it's because of this festival. Um, the festival grounds uh, fit 85,000 people. And according to the research that I was able to do, 80,000 tickets um, max, I think were sold for the festival. And I know it was sold out, like I already said. So, <laughs> We had a relaxing time. We did pool days. We did go out to uh, two parks, one national, one state, which was fun. Um, probably the cheapest meal with the most food that we got. And then Saturday arrived. Oh, before that, so Friday, I think I even did a little bit of a montage or a discussion. I, um, there was a, a show and I opted out of going to the show because I had, I still do, two blisters on my feet and I was cramping and I just, I just didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it, especially if we're going to spend the entire day on our feet at this festival. So Saturday arrives and we get up, we have, you know, we've got all our plans and we head to this cheapo breakfast place. You could see all the emos everywhere. It was hilarious. It just, it, it felt like going to Warp Tour again. And then we're sitting there eating and basically everyone around us is going to this festival. And one guy goes, it's canceled. And I'm just like, he's just, He's just starting something, you know, just to be funny. But no, the festival got canceled 45 minutes before the gates opened. Just let that sink in. 80,000 people for this particular day came to Vegas to go to this festival and it was canceled less than an hour before it started or less than an hour before the gates opened. I saw a lot of people crying. <laughs> uh, 
and uh, I just, I felt so disappointed. And I'd been jokingly calling it Emo Fire Fest. Like, as soon as it got announced, I was like, oh my gosh, this is Fire Fest for the emos. I need to be here. I need to be here for this because what I want to be, I want to see whatever happens. I want to see it firsthand and experience it and have it be part of my life story. Well, I like didn't experience anything. So that was just, it really sucks because this Vegas trip was not cheap. This was a pretty expensive pool vacation. Um, I mean, you know, flights, hotel, food. The food is ridiculously expensive. Um, yeah, you know, it's like over a thousand dollars just just on hotels and flights alone. We do get our money back for the ticket, but I feel like that's not enough, you know? They're not going to comp me for that stay. And I did have a fun time. But the whole point of going to Vegas was for that show. So um, it was canceled because of high winds. Which it was pretty windy. I, you know, like I'm angry. But I'm not. Like it's no one's fault. It's the stupid wind's fault. It was pretty windy that weekend. The Sunday show did not get canceled. So that was also depressing, seeing all the people going. But you all, you had a bit of camaraderie with the other 80,000 people who couldn't go. So everywhere you went on Saturday, well, everywhere my friend and I tried to go, we, we couldn't do anything. So that was also frustrating. We tried to do the haunted museum, no walk-ins no walk available. We then went to Area 15, couldn't do the, I like don't understand what this Area 15 thing was other than like a glow in the dark psychedelic bar thing, um, which I, I posted, I'll, I'll have posted clips about it and I posted it to my Instagram. Um, it was quite trippy, but you know, I'd rather be at a festival than at that but you know it was something to do but you really couldn't do anything we just like went to the bar and walked around and did one experience the only experience we could like get into um so did that and then we we went to a k-pop store which was really cool because they had so many of the like the albums the, like it's fun I don't understand what you do with it other than look at it I guess it's you know someone who doesn't knit is probably looking at my yarn collection like I don't understand what you do with this uh, other than you like you know you can knit with it maybe it's books maybe that's a better frame is looking at the amount of books I have and going why do you like what do you do with this after you've finished reading it I think maybe it's the kind, same same concept so did that and then we were headed to the Bacchanal buffet because we hadn't eaten anything yet outside of that breakfast. So we typically only ate one meal a day just because of how expensive everything was. And you, you know, just stuffed your face and then survived the rest of the day, which was fine, to be honest. Um, I, I, I mean, when I was in college, I typically ate one meal a day. Um, when I'm busy when we're out and about typically only eating one meal a day a lot of times when I'm home I only eat one meal a day I still nothing weird about that uh so on the way to the Bacchanal buffet which is in Caesar's Palace uh we get a phone call and it's it goes hey I'm in some random conference room and we're being told or we think there is going to be a secret concert we don't know who's playing but we think it's going to be a secret concert because we had split off. So there was um, three other people in our group that came later in the week for this festival. And um, we had split off because they went to go gamble and uh, 
like basically be at the hotel and just see if they could find any any other pop-up concerts and stuff and i i just didn't want to waste my day by you know moping at the hotel so we opted to go try and do stuff which we failed um but anyway so they're like we're at this conference room there's a ton of people you guys should should get over here so mid uber ride we switched to getting to the palms and you we walk in and we start we see a line and this is when so the the thought was bring me the horizon was going to be there um but we didn't know anyone else so we see a line we kind of get into it get in it and then this man comes over and he's like tickets are going to go on sale at 6 30 there's no point for you waiting in this line and so then we're like hey we have friends in a conference room he's like just go up these elevator just go up the elevator big line for the elevator there were four elevators I went to a different I went to one that didn't have a line because it was like off to the side wrote it up and you get to basically what you know ballroom conference rooms and there are hundreds of people we managed to find them we sit with them and I'm like hey we're being told you know there's there's really no point being here we just have to get tickets at 6 30 but the the people that were at this hotel were like you're gonna get you know priority you're you're gonna be able to get tickets and then in the end because this secret show because it was secret there was nothing about it on social media it wasn't it also bands were using tiktok and not instagram so that wasn't great <laughs> but anyway it, it was secret it was secret it was not it was not posted who was going to be in this show until I think like maybe 6, 6, 15, 6, 6, 20. And I think we got there at like five. So you didn't know, uh, it ended up being bring me the horizon. And then, um, Travis Barker's son, something Barker. And then another band that I hadn't listened to before. It was, <sighs> I mean, think about this. This, whoever did this, was able to put on a full, full on, like heavy metal concert with all of their stuff, with their backgrounds, because a lot there's like videos and and electronic or projections and stuff. They were able to find a venue. They were able to get people to work this venue all in a matter of 12 hours to, and, and it's not just like you know a band finding a space at at a, a bar like this was a legit concert in a very strange venue I will say it was like we had box we managed to get box t seats and it was weird because moshing near the end and we were row a so we were at the front like jumping around was a little nerve wracking because like if you lost your balance, you could fall off of the balcony. Um, like the edge came up to like my knees. Yeah, basically my knees. So yeah, it was a little dangerous, but it was so much fun and a bit stressful because again, they had promised that we would get tickets and then it was, hey, we're sorry. There are thousands of you in this casino. Apparently they were kicking people out of the casino because it was there was just so many people. Um, there was a couple thousand upstairs and then um, there was several more thousand people downstairs. So this secret concert got out relatively quickly for there not being any formal posts about it. Yeah, so we ended up just going, so we were drinking, we went to a, one of the places for food, which really, we just got dessert. <laughs> we just got dessert. Uh, I got a boozy uh, orange creamsicle, which was delicious. And then the line to get into this venue was so stupid it was stupid um we managed to get in 
but we missed the opening set, which was that Barker guy. We got in line for drinks and you have to pay for water. I, this is America. Water should be, water should be available. Just come, it's tap water. No, you are not allowed to buy tap, you are not allowed to get tap water. You have to buy water and water is $10. I don't like the way this is going, America. I do not like this. Um, yeah, so you had to pay for water. I did not pay for water because um, I am cheap like that and I will pay for beer, but I will not pay for water. Now when it's 10 fucking dollars. So saw the show, it was great. Uh, I was so excited that Bringing the Horizon played Kingslayer, which is their song with baby metal. I feel like a lot of people didn't really like that song or don't know this song, but the lead singer said he thinks it's one of their best songs that they've ever made. Um, I'm sure he's just saying that because, you know, oh, maybe it wasn't as successful or whatever, but I love Kingslayer. I love that song. <laughs> um... Yeah, so did that, and then, oh my gosh, I, so I had started my period, and I, I have emergency tampons in my suitcase just from traveling, and I had used them, and so I needed more, and I could not find more, so that was really frustrating. I, I think it took me an hour to find a Walgreens, and even then, that Walgreens was basically sold out, so I had to buy supers, and, um, yeah, that's not the kind of tampon I needed. So that was that. Sunday was just depressing because you saw all the concert goers that did get to go to their show. Drove past it, you know, we're sad. And then we tried to do other things on Sunday and everything was just a no. We... We did manage to finally do the buffet and oh my gosh, that was expensive, but so fun. So fun. Uh, it was about $100 a plate and there was so much food you could pick. It was, and it was really good food. Like it was great food. It was so good. Oh. That was the only good thing that happened that day. It was the only good thing that happened yesterday. We walked around the shops. Uh, we tried to go to the Atomic Bomb Museum. It was closed, even though it said it was open. We tried to get our nails done. The first place only did gel. I don't like gel. Um, I, I really just like to get my nails painted. I don't like gel. And then the, we went to the second one second one was closed walked through a really sketchy part of Las Vegas where I really wish I had had my pepper spray because like yeah we were walking past where a lot of homeless people live and as we were walking past it this man like came out of the encampment and I just was like I don't have anything with me right now I do not have anything I don't have a, I don't have a knife I don't have pepper spray I just have my phone and luckily this man did not like he was not there to to do like to rob us or anything but I was like immediately on high alert when this man just popped up next to us um and then we uh, there there was another there was like a this woman she looked not well and this man also did not look well and he this he like grabbed her and started like humping her and I was just like I don't want to get into this but also I cannot leave this woman to distress but it was fine because she wasn't in distress she was laughing and she was like will you come see me later tonight and I was like what is this ah so yeah it was um a weird a weird walk um, I was glad to be done with that walk. Uh, so, you know, not always the best decisions are made. And the salon ended up being closed anyway. So, 
yeah, that was Sunday. And then of course the uh, flight got delayed, not by much, but it was delayed probably due to weather earlier on in the day. So instead of landing at the airport at like 6.30, we landed at the airport at like 7.45 or something. So it's a good thing I took took the day off because I didn't even get home until after eight o'clock. So the work day had already started by the time I got off. And I, you know, I was awake driving, of course, like I felt very awake. And I thought, you know, I could, I could just turn my laptop and, and, and work. But once I really got into the apartment, I was like, no, you're just going to go to sleep. So here we are with 21 minutes of discussion. You would be disappointed too if your multiple hundred dollars for a concert were just gone. If for a festival, for a ton of bands that you really love, like Pierce the Veil and Sleeping with Sirens were there, which means they would have played King for a Day. And I love that song. Now, I am lucky enough that I went, like, I've seen them on tour together and they did play King for a Day, but still. I could have seen it again. And I Prevail was there. I haven't seen I Prevail, which I believe they're going to be in uh, Cleveland in like two or three weeks. So I could get tickets to see them. I don't know. I, yeah. Either way, um, it has now been... almost 24 hours it's been like 21 hours since no it's basically almost 24 hours since the buffet since i started eating at the buffet and i'm hungry now which is just depressing because like ugh, i was stuffed at that buffet i could not eat anymore but now I'm hungry again, which is how humans work. But still, it's like, could I have shoved more food into my body? No, I could not finish my crab. I, we got, we went up to the crab station twice. And that second time I like took a bite of that crab and I was like, Ooh, you, you might throw up. You are so full. Uh, and I missed out. They apparently made crepes and I didn't get crepes. I got like so many desserts. Um, I got gelato. Uh, it was great. So I highly recommend that buffet. It definitely gets the highest ratings and I think it's the most expensive buffet. And I could see why because there were so many food options. And it was just all so good. Okay, I'm gonna go do something with my day.